will try and explain a technology uh, which is quite complex called blockchain to you uh, in a very simplified way using one analogy which I've always seen works. It's a very simple analogy. So most of you would have heard about blockchain, read about blockchain, but I'm sure that most of you would still be thinking as to what this thing is. You know, when you read about it, people talk about a universal ledger in the cloud where decisions are made by consensus uh, and it is... Uh, uh, it has it has several properties and it is something which uh, is is powering uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But it's kind of you know unlike other technologies like artificial intelligence or IoT, Internet of Things or virtual reality, where the word itself explains what the tech is. Uh, blockchain sometimes is difficult to understand, and many um, analogies have been used uh, to simplify it. An analogy which I use often is what is called my kitty party analogy. So while many of you might not know what a blockchain is, I'm sure most of you know what a kitty party is. Uh, for people in India, especially, a kitty party is a, is a, is a gathering of people, usually women, uh, where they all come uh, to have a meal together and to gossip and have fun and you know, uh, uh, generally have a good time. Uh, but there's another important thing in a kitty party. But besides all of this, all of them bring money. So imagine if there are 10 women in a kitty party, each one brings 1,000 rupees. And so this 1,000 into 10 or 10,000 rupees becomes what is called a kitty. That's why it's called a kitty party, no other reason. Now, this kitty, uh, there's a lucky draw which happens at the end of the party and the winner takes the 10,000 rupees. The important thing is that the winner cannot play a game. And so the next kitty party, uh, again, a lucky draw happens. The person who won last time is not allowed to participate. Everyone again brings the thousand and someone else wins. And so each kitty party is kind of immutably linked to the last one. Uh, and in the block, like in a blockchain where each transaction or a set of transactions or a block are immutably connected to the last one. Now, the thing is that when all these women are bringing the thousand rupees each and they're putting it at the table, who do they trust with the money? There is no bank there is, there's no central authority, there is no chief lady there who they trust, who can, they can trust with their money. So who do they trust? The answer is that they trust everyone. They trust all the 10 women around the table and they know that for this money to be stolen, you know, the other nine or a majority of the women need to be compromised or need to be hacked. Uh, and so in, they're like nodes in a blockchain where uh, a, a, a majority uh, number or the other nodes need to be hacked for uh, money to be, uh, or, or to be taken away. Uh, so, they, so they don't trust one single authority like a bank, they trust everyone else. This concept of decentralized trust, where you're trusting everyone else, is the core of blockchain. And that's why if you think about crypto, which is one of the big use cases of blockchain, there is no single bank which is issuing crypto. It is actually uh, money which is managed by a bunch of people, uh, by the crowd, uh, like uh, the, the Bitcoin blockchain or the Ethereum blockchain is actually owned by everyone not by a single person and therefore you know next time when someone asks you uh, to explain blockchain tell them oh it's very simple the blockchain is like a kitty party i hope that made it slightly simpler for you decentralized trust have a great day and hope to see you again